Hi, I'm Pete Gerlach. I am a veteran family systems therapist, and I've created a website, a nonprofit educational website, with eight self improvement lessons. One of the self improvement uh, topics that I present has to do with parenting. My observation over three decades as a therapist and seven decades on earth is that a high percentage of average parents without meaning to traumatize and psychologically wound their children. These kids, unless somebody intervenes, grow up and they repeat that with their own children. So I want to expose some information here in this brief summary video on parents traumatizing children. An unspoken question here is, could you have been traumatized by your well-meaning adults? I hope this will give you some insight. To give you some background on what I'm about to say, I invite you to first urge, uh, first view the video whose link you now see. It will talk to you about some fundamental needs that kids need their adults to fill. Um, after you've viewed that, come on back here. Let me start by defining what is childhood trauma? Uh, what is that? I'm going to define that as uh, some kind of environmental process or an event that causes significant psychological damage, injury, or wounds to a young, developing child. Um, that can be a physical trauma, like a hurricane, or it can be subtle emotional trauma from parents. I'm going to focus on the latter. I propose that there are three generic widespread types of early childhood trauma that many people are unaware of or deny. Um, see if these sound familiar to you. One is parental neglect, one is parental abandonment, and the last is parental abuse, child abuse. Let's take a quick look at each one of those. Child neglect um, occurs when the adults responsible for raising a young vulnerable child don't know what the child needs and or they don't know how to fill the needs and or they don't want to fill the needs and they don't. That's my definition of child neglect. See how it compares to your definition. Child abandonment is a paradox because it can occur even though a child is raised for 20 some years in the presence of one or more biological parents or surrogate parents, step parents, foster parents, even though they are living with some supervising adults, young children can still be neglected and abandoned. Um, how does that happen? If their supervising adults either spend little time with a young child, or if they do spend time with the child, but the adults are emotionally unavailable, which incidentally is a sign of an inherited psychological wound. You may know adults, parents, who are unable to empathize and really love, genuinely feel and give love and affection and attention. So a form of child abandonment, parental abandonment, occurs if their supervising adults are emotionally unavailable, meaning they are psychologically wounded and can't bond or empathize or exchange love. This can occur, abandonment can occur in a family where both parents are wound, uh, working and the child is often left alone, or an older child is left to supervise a younger child. Uh, it often occurs with divorced parents where a child gets limited or no contact with one of their own parents. Um, these are epidemic in our country. Almost half of American families, most of whom have young children or some children, 
um, or divorced. The third of three um, traumatizers I want to cover briefly here is child abuse. That's a very complex subject. I'm only going to highlight a couple of points about it. Abuse occurs um, with adults or kids if somebody is dependent on another person, person B depends on person A for something vital, person A uses person B to gratify their own needs in a way that harms person B, and person B cannot protect themselves or leave. When those three conditions are true, true abuse occurs. Children, by definition, can't take care of themselves, they can't flee, and if their adults use them as spies or surrogate partners, um, either socially or sexually, that is true abuse. It is a major form of child trauma, especially if it occurs early in a child's, child's developmental years. So child neglect, child abandonment, and child abuse are three, in my judgment, epidemic family dynamics that are crippling many, if not most, American families, perhaps in other countries as well. What happens to kids who are traumatized by some combination of these? In my judgment, as a professional therapist, typical kids, young kids, who are not aware that this is happening, automatically develop up to six specific psychological wounds. A fragmented personality, excessive shame, excessive guilt, excessive fears, excessive reality distortions like denial or projection, problems learning who to trust, distrusting themselves, trusting other people too much. And if young kids have all five of those wounds, I lump shame and guilt together, they often then inherit the wound of being unable to bond. They can't feel their feelings. They don't know what they are. They're empty. Um, they can't love. They can't connect emotionally, spiritually with other human beings. And because our society frowns on that, they have to learn to pretend that they can bond when in fact they really can't. Those six wounds accrue to children who are unintentionally traumatized by wounded parents who themselves were traumatized as young children. Uh, a fact worth noting here is kids who have been traumatized don't know it. Trauma is what they see as normal. So when such adults, as they start to experience these symptoms, depression, divorce, obesity, problems with money, um, listlessness, apathy, lack of direction, if someone says, how was your childhood? They say, oh, it's fine. They don't know it was not fine until, usually in midlife after hitting bottom and gaining a lot of life experience, they look backwards and they say, Oh my gosh, I, my family was really dysfunctional. I did not get my needs met. I was traumatized. That doesn't happen often until midlife or later. Symptoms of kids before midlife who have been traumatized and wounded are widespread and well known. Kids, quote, acting out at, at home, being disobedient or angry or dishonest. Kids who have substantial school problems, social problems, health problems. These are broad-based symptoms that often, not always, often indicate they have been traumatized in their early years. The kids are not the problem, the parents are. If you want to learn if by chance you were traumatized against all logic, and all your perception. I urge you to study with an open mind. Lesson one in my nonprofit educational website 
at sfhelp.org. That will give you the knowledge and the tools to find out, were you traumatized? Do you have any psychological wounds? And that will enable you to begin to see, are you accidentally traumatizing your own children? A way of introducing what you'll find in Lesson 1 is to see the related videos with, and follow the link that I'm going to show you right now. <clears throat> Notice how you're feeling right now. I've tried to cover a great deal of information in a very short period of time. My point here has been this. A wide number of well-meaning, uneducated, unaware, psychologically wounded parents unintentionally traumatize their young children, pass on psychological wounds and ignorance, uh, and continue the cycle of toxic inheritance. I hope you'll find this thought-provoking, and more than that, I hope it will motivate you to check yourself. Were you traumatized and wounded? Thanks for your attention.